Hi everybody, my name is Linda, and I'm here to tell you the story of my sister's murder. Her and her best friend were murdered April 26, 1973. Since that time, it has been nothing but a journey for me to try and find someone who will step forward and say something that will bring a close to this part of my life. At the time that Wendy was murdered, I was only in my middle 20s. I'm now in my late 60s. I know that some people might think that the perpetrators are dead already, but I'm not dead. So they are still out there and living their lives and possibly having killed more and more people. Anyway, I thought I would take this opportunity to just tell you about the first day that Wendy was murdered and how it's affected my life. I lived there 24 hours a day, all day, all night. One little trigger will set me off for days on end of agony wondering what and why no one has been able to come forward. No one has been brave enough because there are people who do know. Anyway, my day started eight o'clock in the morning. And on that day, I was supposed to call Wendy at work because we were planning a surprise birthday party for my sister, my other sister, Shirley. I was checking to make sure there was nothing else that we needed as far as uh, supplies for the surprise party. I called her at work and they told me she hadn't come in that day. Well, being as my sister worked in the same place, my other sister, Shirley, I decided to give her a call to see if maybe she was sick at home. And she told me, no, they didn't come home that night. So I called the police, and that's when the nightmare began. They took me down to the police station without telling me what had happened to my sister. They took me into a little office where a sergeant came in a few minutes later, sat down and told me that my sister had been murdered, along with her best friend, Donna Stern. Anyway, I was in complete shock. I just stared and stared down on the, onto the floor and, and couldn't even think. After that, I was taken into a, a little room and left there for about a half an hour. In that time period, Donna's mother came in and they brought her into the same room I was in. We stared at each other and she asked me, what happened? And I told her I didn't know. About a, an hour later, I was called back into the sergeant's office and asked if I could go down and identify my sister's body. I said, no, I can't do it. I just, I, I, I just wouldn't be able to do it. And he said, well, someone has to do it and it has to be done soon. Do you know anyone who can do it for you? So they tried to locate my husband but he was on the road and they couldn't. So about a half an hour later, he came back in and said, we do have to have you go down. Someone has to go down and identify your sister's body so that we can continue with this case. We can't do anything until the body has been identified. So um, I said to him, Okay, I didn't really have any choice. And I said, but will they clean her up a little bit before we get there? And he said, well, we'll see what we can do. After that, my head was spinning, trying to think of some way, some reason why I didn't, I couldn't go. So I finally said to them, I'd like to go home and check on my daughter and my other sister. 
uh, there at my apartment and maybe there's someone I can call when I get there who might help me. So I went home and my sister and my daughter were not there. They were up in my mother's apartment apparently. So I grabbed my little phone book and I called a very close friend to the, of the families who lived next door and talked to her a little bit and I told her what they wanted me to do and she said, oh no, you don't have to do that, just a minute, I'll ask Tom. She asked Tommy and he agreed immediately and, we, and, and he said that he would do it. So I went down and told the police that he was coming, he just lived practically next door and then I tried to make more excuses I said does my mother know about this yet and they said no as far as we know no one has told her so I said I want to tell her I want to go and see her and tell her she's at work I know where she is so we went there and sat in her boss's office they brought my mother in and I told her about what had happened and the noise that came out of her is something I will never forget. It was a nightmare and then I had to just leave her there alone and go with them. The police said I had to go with them. They couldn't wait any longer so we left. And on the long trip down to the morgue in the city of Toronto, Tommy and I didn't even speak. He held my hand and I was laying on his shoulder. We didn't say a word. We, when we arrived at the morgue, we went in and what a place. A faint odor of something that most people will never, never know. And they ushered me, ushered us both into a little room off of the main lobby, <clears throat> which had one counter, not one picture, not one book on the counter, nothing. Completely barren of pictures, anything. In this little room was just one bench, a picnic bench. And there they sat us down. About 10 minutes later, Tommy went in to identify my sister. And he came back out, fighting back tears. And he said, it's her. And he sat down in the chair beside me. And he said, don't anybody, don't let anybody ever tell you that she wasn't beaten. He said, she was black and blue everywhere and that's all he said and I looked down at the floor and I leaned over on his shoulder and we held each other's hand we sat there for about 10 minutes and then we started the long journey back home so <clears throat> by the time I got home it was about 3 three thirty, I think somewhere in there my husband was home my daughter was still upstairs in my mother's apartment, but um, then started phone calls, police, radio stations, newspapers, television, on and on it went all night. And before that, we got our usual paper at the front door of our apartment and we brought that in and there on the front page was Wendy and Donna lying on the ground. A picture I'll never forget either. So that was one day. I could tell you so much more of the horror and the nightmare that went on for at least six months, if not more. But I'm hoping that this will be sufficient to make you understand that any family in my position goes through probably basically the same things but in a different way. I'm hoping that you will pass this video along 
and that some brave person will finally come forward and say something that will help to solve this case. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know if it will work, but I'm hoping that you will pass this video along. See if, see how much exposure we can get with it and hopefully end this nightmare. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you.